Wow, it's just great to be together in this 21 days of encouragement, session number six. And uh, yo, the Lord is doing amazing things. And I want to encourage you to keep on running. Don't grow weary in doing good. You know, uh, we have a special picture here of Tuscany, Northern Italy. Let's think of uh, people in Italy. Let's pray for the nations in this time. Because the Lord said it's not wealth or physical things that are in our, our inheritance, but it's the nations. In Psalm 2, it says pray for the nations. And so I want to encourage us tonight with this. A sort of opening statement in um, the first book of John, 1 John. Uh, I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we have, we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifested to us. Such a confident statement. We've seen it, we've heard it. He says, that which we've seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Verse 4. I want to read it again. It says there, this fellowship, you know, the fellowship, the word we have is quinonia, which means to come together. And yet when we are separated, as family, as friends, as believers, we feel like, oh, maybe I feel a bit like a slave in my home. I feel like, oh, I can't get out. You know, I need to run around the house. The other day I did my five kilometers around the house. I must confess it was the most boring run of my life. But hallelujah, going for exercise, you know. I think I did about 200 times around the swimming pool at the back. But, you know, so all of us sort of have a bit of withdrawal systems. We're out of our comfort zone. But yeah. They write to us, and the writer says to us simply, Hey, we've seen it with our eyes, we've confessed it to you, and we want to declare to you that there is a fellowship that is much stronger than just our natural fellowship. Because remember, they're writing a letter. He's writing a letter and say there's a fellowship, a communion that we have with the Father and with Jesus Christ. And the Lord is inviting you and me into that communion with Him, into that place of peace into that place of grace, into that place where you and I, even when we become vulnerable and we say, yo, I can't make it or I'm worried about my business, I'm worried about my family, I, I don't know, I don't see a way out. Then there's the Lord inviting you and says, come, I've prepared a place for you at the table to come and sit even in front of your enemies, like David says, even in the face of your enemies. Now imagine you have this communion table, <laughs> And your enemies are sitting on the other side. And the Lord is dishing up and say, come, eat with me. That's what I love about the book of Revelations in, in chapter 3. It says, I stand at the door and I knock and I want to come in. He doesn't write that to unbelievers. He's writing that to believers. So Jesus says, don't let me stand outside the door, church. Because it was written to one of the seven churches. He says, I want to come in and I want to feast with you and you feast with me. Communion fellowship with God and so this is so amazing what he says here at the end and I'm going to read this verse again 1 John 1 verses 3 and 4 that which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with the son Jesus Christ and these things we write to you that your joy may be full God wants you to walk in the fullness of his joy but he says, we're going to have fellowship, yes. But remember, it's a letter. It's not like they're seeing each other. But they says, the fellowship is primarily around the word. It's around who God is and the presence of God. And isn't that amazing that you and I can pray exactly the same prayer or even different prayers all across the world. And God will hear it. We have fellowship together through the Holy Spirit. And so God wants to break all loneliness, all challenges in our lives he, he doesn't want you to feel like yeah i'm just fighting this battle alone because there's a fellowship god calls us into and it's a spiritual fellowship to start and yes we are looking forward to that time when we can feast together when we can eat together as families and as churches again because that's great there's such a place where we encourage each other but that's why it's important that you spend time in the word spend time with god spend time and say holy spirit even in the times when I feel a bit oppressed or negative, 
you are going to be there with me. You know, I want to tell you a story of the church, the persecuted church, uh, especially in Afghanistan. And the most amazing thing happens there is when they do training for the church, um, they do it in caves, completely in the dark. So you don't see the person that you actually connect with or the people that come to the training. Everything is in the dark. And so even for one or two days, you won't know the name of the person. You won't know um, what, where they come from for the sake of persecution, for in case you get caught. But isn't it amazing that when people share the word, when people come together, there's a spiritual connection. And I've seen that many times going to Iran, going to different countries all across the world. You'll meet somebody and for five minutes, you'll get to know them and you'll see in their eyes that they're a believer. Why? Because we are spiritual beings and we are connected. Some of my best friends today are people from Pakistan, people from Nepal, people from India different places all across the world and when we get together again the most amazing thing it's like our relationship just continues why because it's built around the kingdom it's built around the things of god and that's what i want to encourage you with don't think like oh everything is standing still no the kingdom is advancing and that's why we need to pray 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 <laughs> that is the key Seek the face of God because this, we're living in this time. We're living for a time such as this. So even if so many people in the persecuted countries, they're used to this type of living, just getting together, praying for each other, just connecting in the spirit with each other. I want to encourage us, let's remain spiritually focused. And whether it's the church in Afghanistan or the church in America, God is shaking so many things in our lives. What used to be the norm is never going to be the norm again. But it must start with the spiritual awakening. And that's why you can go and read. This is your homework from verse 5 to verse 9. It says, hey, we have to walk in the light. And the amazing thing is if I switch on the light, the darkness flees. There is no room for darkness when the light shines. And this is my encouragement, but also my challenge for you. It's going to read those verses. Say, God, I want to stay in the light. Lord, I want to stay in fellowship. I'm not going to withdraw from fellowship. That coming together with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help you. I'm going to pray for that in this time. That, that there will be awakening in your heart to seek the face of God. To keep on seeking the face of God. And to be strengthened in the fullness of God. And that your joy may be full. That's why we have the testimony. That's why we have this. The testimony of Christ. That is what the... That this book is about so let me pray father i thank you for everyone that can see me hear me i pray that their joy may be full and we want to declare the testimony and the fellowship of jesus in our lives thank you lord for relationship that is spiritually orientated not fleshly orientated i pray for every family pray for every business come against every fear oppression and lie because lord you are not the father of lies. You're the father of adoption. The father who adopts us as children. And Lord, let the blood of Jesus and the testimony of Jesus speak again tonight in our lives of that freedom that he has brought. And Lord, let our joy be full. Only you can do that when we have fellowship with you. And we want to thank you for that in Jesus' name. Feel free to contact us. Oh, I forgot to say amen. Amen. Feel free to contact us. Uh, on that cell phone number, um, just sending a WhatsApp or a SMS, a text message. If you're in trouble or if, or if you have any prayer needs, uh, that's why the body of Christ is there. We love you and we're looking forward. Tomorrow night, uh, we have a bit of a surprise. Uh, so don't miss out.